the Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. Unlike the nations around them, the Israelites worshiped only one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. When God led the Israelites out of slavery in Egypt, God called Moses up to the top of Mount Sinai. You have seen how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, you will be my treasured possession and a holy nation. Out of a deep love, God gave Moses a set of ten rules so that the people would know how to live in their newfound freedom. Here is what God says. Don't put any other gods in place of me. Don't make statues of other gods to worship. Don't misuse the name of the Lord your God. Rest on the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and mother. Do not murder. Keep your promises to your husband or wife. Do not steal. Do not lie. Do not be jealous or envious of what others have. There were 10 commandments and many additional laws too. But it's not stealing if I just happen to borrow my neighbor's best donkey grooming brush, right? <sighs> Some people look for ways around all those rules. Other people were so scared of breaking the rules they'd spent their whole lives trying to get it exactly right. Uh, what if I walk too far on the Sabbath and, and, and get out of breath? That's, that's not resting. We, we better say you can't go outside the city at, at all on the Sabbath. There were 613 laws in total and even more that the religious leaders added. They spent hundreds of years trying to get those laws exactly right and to make sure others did too. It was really the only way they knew that they would be sure that God was pleased with them. You can't sacrifice this goat in the temple. It has a freckle three-eighths of an inch behind its right front leg. Even under Roman rule, the Jewish leaders made sure to keep every single law perfectly, but they were more worried about getting things right than about what was in their hearts. Then, Jesus showed up, traveling and teaching, but he didn't act like any other teacher or rabbi. He gathered followers from the outcasts, fishermen, and tax collectors. Come, follow me. Jesus spent time with the people everyone else avoided. He made blind people see, and those who couldn't walk get up and dance. He healed those with terrible skin diseases. Look, look, my skin is clean. I can go home to my family. Jesus invited women to follow him, something no other rabbi would do. He welcomed little children and blessed them, even though most people saw kids as a nuisance. The kingdom of heaven belongs to people like them. Jesus told a story in which a Samaritan, a person who was viewed as the enemy by Jews, was the hero. And when Jesus was giving out a list of people blessed by God, it certainly did include perfect rule followers. Blessed are those who are humble. They will be given the earth. Yep, Jesus was turning things upside down and the religious leaders did not like it one bit, so they started looking for ways to trap him. One day, they saw Jesus approaching a man with a twisted hand. Jesus, does the law allow us to heal on the Sabbath day? They wanted to catch Jesus breaking the law by healing the man, but instead, Jesus said, What if one of your sheep falls into a pit on the Sabbath day? Won't you lift it out? A person is worth more than sheep. So the law allows us to do good on the Sabbath day. Then, Jesus healed the man's hand. Preposterous. During Passover week, the whole city was stirred up to see what Jesus would do, and the religious leaders were desperate to silence him. Several of the leaders, called Pharisees, came to Jesus. One of them was an expert in all 613 laws, and he was sure he could turn the crowd against Jesus. <coughs> Teacher! The law expert waited until there was a silence so that everyone would hear. 
Which is the most important commandment in the law? <laughs> the law expert told himself gleefully, Jesus will have to pick just one law, and then I can point out all the other laws he's ignoring, and everyone will get upset. But Jesus said simply, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind. This is the first and most important commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Before the law expert could tear this answer apart, Jesus continued, Everything that is written in the law and the prophets is based on these two commandments. But, oh. In a few short sentences, Jesus had taken 613 laws and wrapped them up in just two things to remember. Love God, love others. Instead of rules, it's about hearts. If you love God, you won't put other things ahead of God. If you love others, you won't steal or break promises to them. Instead of memorizing long lists of rules, God simply wants followers of Jesus to ask, what does it look like today for me to love God and love others? It wasn't easy back then and it isn't easy for us now, but God will pour out love in our hearts anytime we ask. <laughs>